Yeah, that, that reminds me about your book on stewardship. And if there was one page that stood out to me was that word grant that you have in there. Yeah. And for those who've seen the book. That was yours. That was the CFA Institute's. <laughs> that's, why it, that's why it stood out. <laughs> and basically what it is, is you know, asking everyone to say, if you had to describe finance in one word, what would that be? And when you look at that diagram, you know, with the size of the word, depending on how often it was repeated, it talks about it being crooks or untrustworthy and so forth. And I think about, you know, I have now a grandson, and I look at him and said, if my grandson, when he gets old enough and comes to me and says, you know, Grandpa, I want to go into this profession, how would I respond? And what you were talking about in terms of Charlie Ellis's book uh, refers to that uh, winning the loser's game. I believe was the title of that book. That, that's one of his books. Right. And when you think about it, people also talk about our industry <coughs> has moved from servicing industry to a transaction industry. That would be Jack Bogle's. Uh, so when you take all that aspect of the investment philosophy in terms of what Bogle talks about it in your book, what Charlie Ellis talks about in your book, in terms of how we have moved away from that responsibility to our client to this transaction oriented business and we're not thinking long term. You know, can you can you share a light on it? Well there is a lot of good writing that I didn't um, well I, I'm sorry, there is a chapter in the book uh, by um, oh, no, Mark Wiseman who chairs the Canadian Pension Investment Board and Dominic Barton, the managing partner of McKinsey, and they just hosted a, a seminar in New York on long-term investing and of course that gets at one of the the uh, ills that Jack Bogle has been inveighing against for years and that is the increasingly short-term focus of our industry in the book uh, there's a chapter by Roger Martin the Dean of the Rotman School where he talks about short-termism in the construct of, of um, executive compensation which he believes is tied in being tied to relatively recently stock price of the companies that executives work for has created short-term and uh, speculative focus for uh, executives as opposed to real markets long-term focus. I mean a lot of people are writing about about all of this. Now on the other side though I, I, in 1981 I started working in the financial services industry. By the way my father was a f nuclear physicist. He was the Dean of Yale University and he believed that if you spend one minute a day thinking about money you had wasted your day. He literally thought it was something you, it was beneath him and beneath anybody to worry about or think about. Pursuit of the truth and I can remember him sitting I haven't told this story to Steve Schwartzman, whom I just spent some time with, but sitting, reading the New York Times profile of Steve Schwartzman, who was a student at Yale in the residential college where my father was master for a few years, um, when he was an investment banker at Lehman Brothers, and he literally threw the, the New York Times at me and said, you're not going to be like that, are you? And so part of the way I think of of my career in financial services is to say to my dad, no, I'm not going to be like that. <laughs> or what he perceives to Steve Schwartzman to be like at the time. He's actually, you know, pretty remarkable guy. Um, and I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a, I've totally lost the question you asked me, but <laughs> uh, maybe you can reground me on, on this subject. Oh, no, what I was going to say, what I was going to say is, so in 1980, I entered the financial services industry really uh, completely green behind the ears. I was a newspaper reporter. I wanted to get into the industry because I'd covered the rebuilding of the city of Lowell, Massachusetts, which is a burned out industrial city that was remade through the visionary work of corporate leaders, political leaders, not-for-profit leaders, and the, uh, the National Park Service which designated the city of Lowell a National Historical Park. It's privately owned inside the park boundaries, but it has an interpretive center. It has the Lowell National version of Smokey the Bear Rangers in it. 
And the city was reborn. I thought, that's what I want to do. I went back to business school, got a degree, and went into public finance so that I could help public governments get involved in projects like that. I thought I was getting involved in finance not to be like Steve Schwartzman, but to make a difference in the world. And that's when I go back to the old timers in our industry and I say, what's changed? That's what they point to. So I thought I was entering the industry to do something noble, to help the world in one way or another. How far have we come from that? On the other hand, if you look at the stockbroker of 1980 and the stockbroker, the wealth manager of today, it is night and day difference. The level of professionalism, the process that person goes through, which is the equivalent today, if they're doing their job right, of taking a patient's discovery before they, you know, before you prescribe medicine to them, you actually ask them, have they ever had heart disease, you know, cancer in the family, all of that. That all goes on. You have people who have invested in their, person, their professional education multiple degrees and designations. You have processes and support for the wealth management industry today that if you're moving along a path between sales and fiduciary, these investment professionals today are nine-tenths of the ways towards being full-fledged fiduciary for their clients. So the industry is this hodgepodge of we've lost touch with some of the things we should have stayed in touch with, and yet we've made progress in other areas and becoming more professional. Um, it's an odd set of cross currents. In some ways, we're better than we've ever been, and in some ways, we're worse than we've ever been. <laughs>